please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. Um, let's um, get a quick check on the markets. It's Titan Industries, which is now on the verge of dipping into the red. So that stock has slipped about 3.5% from the top of the day. Aisha Motors is at a fresh 52-week low now. So just at that 25,170 mark, uh, its Chennai plant, Uragudum, is witnessing a tool-down strike by certain workers. So since yesterday, the production has been hampered. As of now, there has been no communication on the quantum of production loss. But clearly, it's having an impact on the sentiment today because that stock is under pressure on the back of this strike at their Chennai plant. Uh, Ashwini Gujral and Rajat Bose are here to talk about the index levels as well as a few stocks. Um, Ashwini, a bit of a flip-flop day for a market. We had a bit of strength early in the morning. Part of it has been sold into holding up in the green for the benchmark indices right now. Uh, so up about a half a percent, but significantly off from morning gains. How are you reading the signs? So you've just seen a, a spike on the nifty and bank nifty my sense would be that uh, you know uh, the idea should be to sell into this strength and uh, you know often we've seen that uh, in the last hour uh, the bank nifty tends to give up gains particularly if crude is higher so given that you can say today is a bit of a sideways type day but uh, you are 500 points off the lows so I don't think, uh, you know, this is quite a point where uh, in a strong downtrend you should be getting long. Mm -hmm. So my idea is that keep a high of the day type of stop and get short and let's see uh, what happens by the end of the day. Uh, I don't see too much strength, but uh, after many days of, uh, you know, downside, what you are getting is, you know, sideways up and down type of move. Now, having said that... Uh, uh, Canfin Home is a sell with a stop of 257, target of 242. India Bulls Housing is a sell with a stop of 930, uh, target of 900. And HUL is a buy with a stop of 1600, target of 1645. Okay, all right. Uh, so that's the word that's coming in there from Ashwini with a few of his picks as well. The market's actually, now they're holding about that uh, 11,000 odd mark, so keep an eye out uh, on that front. But let's get in, Rajat. Rajat, your view on the index as well as some trading picks? I would say that uh, so long as 10,969 to about 10,945 range is held by the Nifty, uh, I, I, we can still expect a recovery. Of course, unless 11,100 is decisively taken out, we should not be reading too much into this recovery. But as I said, the 10,969 to about 10,945 in my reckoning is a strong support zone now. If that gets violated, then again, you see mayhem and all that. And regarding the bank nifty, I would say that uh, 25, uh, above 25,000, uh, it should remain. And if 24,967 to about 24,913, if that range of 54 points get violated, Again, then there is a possibility that Bank Nifty start going down once again. Having said that, uh, for the individual stocks, I'm going long on HDFC Life, which uh, as a disclosure from my side, I personally hold some shares of this company bought recently. Uh, uh, HDFC Life, I would put a stop loss below 382, targets would be 401 and 409. And Indigo September Futures, I would advise to sell, 838 plus would be my stop loss, and 810 is the target. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much for that, Rajat, as well as uh, uh, Ashwini. Well, uh, I think we should uh, you know, address those flashes that are up for you on the screen. There's some news that's coming in there on Island FS, and in fact, they have, uh, you know, just to read out some of those flashes, uh, Lata will be joining in to uh, give us more details on that, but just pull up all the group stocks, Island FS, uh, you know, the transport company, ITNL, all of them, they're reacting to that piece of news. What, in fact, uh, you know, the source-based information says is that most of the shareholders are in, open to investing, around 4,500 crore rupees. They have around 17,000 crore rupees of short-term uh, payments that can be met, and they've got expression of interest for around 14 out of 25 assets. And that explains why all those group stocks, they are spiking up as uh, we speak, uh, you know, just to get some of them up for you on the screen. Island FS Engineering, you have ITNL as well, that's moving higher. 
Island FS Investment Managers as well. All of them have recovered from the low point of the day. So I think we should get uh, Lata as soon as possible. She'll fill us in. Maybe get a smaller company as well up. Noida, Noida Toll Bridge as well. That's another smaller one that, in fact, is an uh, you know, Island FS uh, group. So that one, in fact, had moved to around 7 rupees yesterday. So some of these stocks, a lot of them, they are all moving higher and clearly reacting to this uh, piece of news that uh, Lata is bringing us. Uh, in fact, a few more details. They've got expression of interest for 14 of 25 uh, assets. And sale of 25 assets can uh, reduce debt by around 35,000 crores. But to put it into perspective, we'll have Lata who's joining in uh, you know, shortly. In fact, uh, this should alley has, concerns, yeah. right? And considering that the whole island affairs issue and crisis was at the heart of the problem, which also led to panic in the NBFC market, tightness in the debt market, um, it will ease the situation. But now we've got Lata with us. Uh, Lata, what are your sources telling us? Hey guys, please read all the flashes. Uh, ILNFS sources are saying that they have 17,000 crore of short-term uh, yeah. um, you know, responsibilities to redeem and that they th they hear. See, this is ILNFS company. Shareholders are you know only what they hear mm. from the shareholders whom they've spoken with that all of them will subscribe to the 4,500 crore issue and they are trying to sell 25 uh, assets. 14 of them, they've got expression of assets, uh, interest, and if they are sold, then they can meet that 17,000 crore. But just after that, HDFC sources don't desire to subscribe to ILNFS rights issue. Now, that is equally important to know. The people who are speaking at ILNFS are ILNFS company, guys. Whereas this is the shareholder, sources are the shareholder, one of them. Now, obviously, there are other shareholders, and probably Oryx and uh, Abu Dhabi and LIC will not have the same view. But one source, at which is of the one of the one shareholders, is saying they don't desire, but will see. So I think it is moral suasion on the part of RBI. So that's why they're not giving a, a bland, a, a emphatic statement. Uh, you know, the RBI meeting is on 28th uh, on Friday, so they're keeping it open. They don't desire, but uh, uh, we will see. That is why so far we have always considered ourselves passive investors. It's a financial investment. We did not claim a board seat. But they admit that it has excellent assets. Mm -hmm. And if it gets a line of credit from someone like LIC, then uh, the company should be able to unwind itself. So I want to actually point out from both these that really there isn't a 100% meeting of minds. Mm. I do not want to give the impression that ILNFS is a solved case. Yes, no. Yes. This no. is the company. They are not the shareholders. They are not the guys who are going to put the money. They hear from their creditors that the creditors understand a re... A structuring of the debt is needed. Mm -hmm. They hear from their shareholders that many of them are willing to put in money. Mm -hmm. But when I spoke to one of the shareholders who was available, yes, the, uh, mm -hmm. they, at least it's not a desire on their part, but uh, RBI has called a meeting and so they will take note of it. Let's not run away with anything. Yeah. All I'm actually trying to present is that a complete meeting of minds uh, about ILNFS is not yet reached. Mm. Maybe it will be reached by 28th. Uh, maybe something will come out of the 29th board meeting. But I'm just putting two cards that I have on the table. Uh, others will put their cards or change their cards. Mm after the meeting with RBI, we will have to wait and see. Okay, so far now that optimism is waning on uh, some of these stocks, uh, so they've slipped a bit from the top of the day, uh, and there can always be a slip between the cup and the lip, right, in such cases. Um, but there you have it. So ILFS Engineering is off from the early morning, uh, from uh, that spike that it saw. Let's um, get the early rates up from the European markets yesterday. Uh, most of the markets were under pressure and fears of, you know, as the trade uncertainty weighed. Um, today, Europe has opened up mainly in the green, so up close to about 0.3%. Well, the markets are at least holding in the green today, but select stocks are seeing selling. You have IDFC, IFCI, Jay Prakash Associates. All those three stocks should come up for you on the screen. That's giving you a sense of what's going on actually in the broader market. Select stocks are moving to the low point of the day, even though the market is holding with a gain of around 40 points. There's a sense out there that some part, you know, some part of uh, the street wants to take some money and at least, you know, move away with whatever they're getting. HCC is moving lower. You have Century Textiles that was holding more or less flattish. That's moved to the low point of the day as we speak. But uh, on that note, let's get you some market opinion that we got earlier today. We spoke with Mr. Sanjay Mukim, the director, India Equity Strategy of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, to get his views on the under-fire under space, that's the NBFC space, as well as his outlook of the markets. Let's listen in. We are still not in sane territory um, and, and not in comfortable ranges to my mind. 
and if you want to pick a level you look at the price to book multiple or the price to earnings rather than to in, you know point that's down 25 percent from peak uh, if you look at multiples i would suspect that there probably is still more downside stuff that goes up will probably lead the market down on the downside as well i mean people will sell what they have i suspect uh, but it is sharper than i would have imagined frankly for it to have happened in the last two to three days in such a volatile manner but we have been highlighting for a while that this year india was facing a deteriorating external environment where dollar liquidity was very predictably going to get tighter as it has and the internal dynamics were going to get a bit messier with the upcoming elections so the domestic sentiment which was supposed to have held up the market for all the while was very likely to break away and this is what i think is kind of happening at the moment now and my suspicion is that these both of these things are not going to turn anytime soon so the market's probably going to remain weak for a while there is a bunch of companies which will see local currency earnings upgrades because of the weaker rupee and there is another bunch which will see earnings risk so there will be either margin pressures at the domestic consumer businesses or top line issues if these companies pass on the higher cost to consumers either way the domestic facing businesses are likely to see earnings downgrades or earnings misses and the problem i think with this sector is that they are at very high expectations so my sense is it's more the issue of having fewer buyers now that this is happening and rather than a systemic risk to my mind that's the market out sign is the next stock which is on our radar but before we go to that just a quick check on the markets there has been a pickup in the markets so now higher by nearly 250 points in the sensex uh, the nifty is up close to about 0.6% and bajaj finance finserv are moving higher so gain of close to about 2.5% grasim is again going for itself um tcs is trying to recoup some of its early losses are uh, still down but off from the early morning levels but as promised let's uh, invite the management of scient uh, with us ajay agarwal the president and cfo of the company joins us now uh mr agarwal before we get chatting about the business and you know the rupee benefit on the company as well um if you could first tell us this jv that you have with bluebird the israeli company that in early september has won its first order from the indian army uh, some color on this order the size uh, um what kind of margins will you enjoy and the opportunities it throws up for you to participate and make make in india uh thank thanks uh, for having me uh, in as far as uh, you know this uh, particular uh, business with indian army is concerned uh, you are aware uh, that you know we had announced some foray uh, into technology based uh, new business uh, which is uh, propelled by make in india and the first uh, or one of the uh, earliest initiative is uh, to get some kind of unique technology for uh, uavs and that is how we signed this joint venture with uh, a israeli company which has this unique technology which we want to indigenize uh, so the first order i would say is more symbolic in nature uh, i think it opens up uh, huge opportunities i think the market is very large but i don't think you should read too much into this uh, uh, order uh, that's more uh, symbolic Okay. All right. So we'll uh, keep that, uh, you know, to discuss at another date, then, Mr. Agarwal. But if you could give us some color, sir, the rupee has been the big talking point. That's depreciated from around 67 to around 72 as we speak. Want to get your sense of how much, what percentage of your revenues are hedged, and according to you, you know, what's the tailwind can that can play out uh, because of the rupee depreciation? so definitely uh, for a company like uh, ours which is an ex exporter uh, you know 96% 97% of our business is export we do have a large uh, content uh, which is offshore in inr we do get a benefit of uh, currency so if you look at uh, last year to this year uh, and the journey if you take from uh, the levels of 64 65 to something like 70 72 a company like ours uh, at a, a full year benefit level will get something like 200 250 basis points but if you see that impact for you know a that it will only impact the services business not the manufacturing business which is the ratio of 90 to 10 that's the service business which is uh, getting this benefit is 90% then you account for you know uh, that That there have been some headwinds uh, which have been there from cross currency. Overall, we expect 150 to 200 basis points for the uh, current year as the upside on the operating uh, margin per se only because of uh, currency. As far as hedging is concerned, we have uh, about 70% of uh, net cash inflows uh, which are uh, hedged. 
So that also means that, you know, uh, compared to the uh, current spot rates, if this OP uh, rate okay. continues, we will have uh, losses uh, in our uh, other income. But net net, oh. the impact is uh, positive. Okay, so would you revise your margin guidance of flat margins for F519 higher? Will we see some margin gains in F519? So uh, right now, uh, what we are uh, doing is that, you know, we are uh, uh, stuck to uh, the uh, outlook of uh, the flat margin year on year. And let me just explain in a minute what we are doing. Uh, I think we are really uh, building this organization for long term. So two or three things we are doing, I think in terms of the salary hikes that we have given, that's about 200 basis points. In terms of the investment that we are putting in new business accelerator, that's another uh, uh, 100 basis points. Uh, and, you know, so uh, also in terms of tightening the belt, in terms of not letting go of people where the corresponding business is not there, which is utilization management or investing on sg &A to build this company for long term, I would say we are really not tightening the belts to say that all the current benefit should necessarily flow. I think a lot of it is getting invested. That's why currently uh, we are looking at a flat margin year on year. All right. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Mr. Agarwal, for stopping by, sir, and giving us those details. Looking forward uh, to touching base with you as this financial year does progress. Good news for the equity markets, holding with a gain of around 60 points. So um, big recovery from the low point of the day. And let's chat commodities where we have seen the crude oil prices continue to make headlines. But sugar, we spoke about that earlier, but we have seen the sugar prices as well continue to wait uh, ahead of the cabinet meeting tomorrow. Remember last week, the cabinet deferred taking any stand or a decision on this, but the markets are anticipating that we will hear something on the export subsidy now tomorrow. So ahead of that, you have seen the sugar stocks run up quite strongly. But the expectation is that as compared to last year, where 2 million tons of export was made mandatory, uh, not much of that was exported, though, but this year we might see a 5 million tons of export being made mandatory. And also we are looking at a subsidy of uh, for the cane and for transport as well. The sugar prices in the meanwhile haven't done so well because the bulk buying is missing. This is that uh, inauspicious period where you don't uh, go out, buy sweets, make sweets, etc. That is one of the reasons. And also because this is month end and uh, the, the mills have a mandate to sell 2 million tons uh, uh, in this month itself. So that that rush of sugar sales into the markets also is something that seems to be pulling the prices down. Sumit Bagaria now joins us to talk more about that. Sumit, hi, the sugar prices and the sugar stocks as well. What's your sense on both of these? Well, see, uh, as far as sugar prices are concerned, there is a possibility that we might see some uh, pressure. But as far as sugar stocks are concerned, in last uh, one or two days, we have seen some good move in most of the sugar stocks. So there is a possibility that this upside move can continue in sugar stocks. Hmm. Sumit, what is your sense for the near term? I mean, would you say that uh, there's, there's been a lot of run-up that we already have seen in sugar prices and stocks and there could be some pressure coming in? Or is it going to be very event-related as the markets are anticipating some uh, export subsidy tomorrow? Well, it's going to be event-related, but the overall scenario looks like that from present levels there is a possibility that we might see some downside, like uh, from the last uh, uh, quoted prices, like 2050, there is a possibility that we might see some pressure and from... And uh, as far as levels are concerned, we can see move till 2900 or 2950 levels. Okay, so no respite for sugar prices though. How are you looking at the crude oil prices in the meanwhile? Because uh, this has been an area, a sector which has seen constant gains at $81 plus kind of levels for Brent uh, on the charts. How much far further higher are you expecting it? See, uh, crude has given a one-way upside move. Now it's a... Uh, uh, cooling at around 72.25, uh, NIMEX crude mm. I'm talking about. So sure. from here, there is a possibility that we might see a move till 74, $75. If the same happens, there is a possibility that MCX crude can give upside move of around uh, 150 rupees from present levels. I think any dip from present levels till uh, 50 to 50 or 50 to 40 levels should be used as buying opportunity for a trading perspective. Uh, one can maintain stop loss of around 50 to 100 levels on lower side. 5200 should be the strict stop loss for trading perspective. And on higher side, there is a possibility that we might see uh, levels of around 5350 as an immediate target. If the move continues, there is a possibility that we might see move to 5400 levels also. All right. Thanks so much, Manisha, Manisha as well as uh, Sumit. Well, some good news coming in there from uh, the equity markets, actually, because we have moved to the high point of the day. A couple of stocks that are moving well, ITC as well as TCS. Both those two have moved higher in the last few minutes, and that's what's really helping the market sit with a gain of around 60 points approximately. But it's not really a tide that's living all boats, because if you pull up uh, 
India Bulls Housing Finance, that stock has moved to the low point of the day. It's on the verge of breaching the 900 rupee mark as well. So keep an eye out on that one. It's suddenly seeing a lot of selling pressure. Just keep an eye out on that one, actually. In the last few minutes, the stock has fallen 30 rupees very, very quickly. So I think you must keep an eye out on this one. Suddenly some big selling pressure coming in for India Bulls Housing Finance. We'll wrap up on this show. You stay with us. Business Lunch takes all the action forward.